you know, how much time should I spend on chasing the keyword? Well, how much revenue does it generate? How much time should I spend optimizing this content? Well, how much revenue does it generate? It's always about the money because I'm more interested in the commerce part of e-commerce than I am in just, you know, having a website. And so I give out homework from time to time when I'm doing presentations. So do you know right now, you know, last month in March, how much money SEO generated for you? How much, you know, revenue you got from organic traffic from, from Google and Yahoo and Bing? And how much profit came from that revenue? And when I say revenue, for us, our, uh, our margins are the same on pretty much all our products. So um, I really mean profit. Um, the next thing is how much would it cost for you to, to replace that SEO traffic if it suddenly went away? If you had to pay for it with a, you know, PPC ads like Google AdWords or ads on, on Bing and Yahoo. And put a dollar amount on that. And what I want you to do as a retailer is I want you to actually you know, realize that you're getting all this you know, quote unquote free traffic. Um, you need to make sure that you are allocating your time and energy and resources you know, accordingly to how much uh, traffic you're getting from this traffic source. Are you spending the money on, on uh, generating content? I'm going to talk about that a little bit as we go on. Uh, a little bit about my background. Um, we have multiple projects going on, but I grew up in the family business, Gun Dog Supply, started by my parents back in 1972. Um, we sell training supplies for hunting dogs. And it's a really, really specific niche within the pet industry. And there's a there's Click the Dog. That's one of Steve's 17 dogs that he has now. And my brother and I are actually in business, and we have a separate company, uh, Snell Brothers. But um, we got out of the family business, but then we were dragged back in back in 96 uh, when PetSmart opened up across the street from my mom's store, and her bright idea was, hey, get me on the internet. And I was like, mama, nobody's making any money off the internet. It's just porn and IPOs. And she's like, I, I don't care. Get me on the internet. And so we took our online catalog and, um, you know, copied and pasted all the stuff out of my PageMaker files into uh, a Yahoo store back in 1997, and it radically changed our business. And I actually was more interested in the Yahoo store uh, development side of things, so I've been doing, you know, that as well as retailing, you know, since 97. But um, this is our website, gundogsupply.com. And let me talk a little bit how I do SEO today. All right. All right, the first thing I'm going to talk about today from an SEO standpoint is search engines. Um, 80% of the traffic that most of my clients are getting is coming from Google. You know, you get 10% from Bing, you get 10% from Yahoo, but Google is where the money is. So most everybody knows that. If you're looking at your stats, you know Google's driving the bus. Um, one thing that a lot of folks don't realize, though, is that, you know, in Google, you have to be on the first page of results. One of the first things that I noticed, you know, back in 97 was that the higher rank we were for a keyword phrase, the more traffic we got. And, well, yeah, like, duh, everybody knows that now. 90% um, of the clicks come from page one, and most of those clicks come from the top five above the fold. You need to be, you know, in the first screenshot, and this screenshot shows you, you know, you're seeing, you know, four organic listings, a video listing, and shopping listing. 70% um, of the clicks on page one are coming from organic, which is like the left side of the search engine results page. And I'm waiting for my slides to update. 30% of the traffic and the clicks on page one come from clicks on ads or paid listings, the, the, the paid you know, AdWords over there on the right-hand side. And then, like I said a minute ago, shopping is actually more and more important because Google is doing these uh, blended results with universal search. They're pulling in results from their video database. They're pulling in results from Frugal or, or their Google products. And um, one of the most important things that we did at the Yahoo store this year was we actually had to switch to how we were doing our reviews. We're using uh, reseller ratings. Because the way um, when Yahoo Shopping phased out their reviews, we, we lost all those reviews. And in about a month and a half, we've gotten you know four or five hundred just super awesome reviews. So your homework, if you don't have a third-party review site, is go sign up with somebody like Reseller Ratings or BizRate or somebody like that. And um, so make sure that your customers have a chance to rate you, and that will help you in, in the product listings, which is driving a significant part of revenue for uh, for e-commerce sites. So All right, SEO helpful. 101. Everybody knows this. I promise I'm going to go deep. I promise I'm going to give you ideas that are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars if you're doing a million dollars plus a year. Um, this is an old page from Gundog Supply. This is, you can see on here, um, 
when the page loads. You can see on here, this is our uh, doghouse heaters page from about two years ago. And I've got links on the left-hand side. I've got content on the right-hand side. This is how I you know, optimize a, a section page. Um, I've got snippets underneath the uh, individual products, which you can see are two best sellers you know, above the fold in the screenshot. Uh, just like it's been for you know, practically 10 years now, the title tag is the most important on-page SEO element. If you don't do anything, make sure that your keywords are listed in your title tag. You need unique title tags on every single page. You've got 66 characters to play with. Um, we've done a lot of SEO testing, and it doesn't matter where your keywords are, the position in the title tag. Uh, as of three months ago, the last time we did a big round of testing, you just need to have your keyword phrases in your title. And the main reason why um, you want to write you know, really good titles, not just keyword rich, you want it to be you know, compelling for humans as well, is because in the search engine results, that blue link is your title tag most of the time in Google. All right, the next thing you want to do is write keyword rich text. And this is even more important now in a post-Panda universe because Google's penalizing folks if they don't have unique content that's compelling that keeps folks on the page. They're nuking sites that have you know, data feeds and that have low, uh, low value content. And so this is an example of you know, a little editorial um, that Steve has, my brother has, on, our, uh, on one of our product pages. And you'll notice in here I've got the keywords, you know, used like, like he would be using them if he's talking to somebody on the telephone. All right, the, the third most important thing is keywords in link text on other pages. Keywords in links pointing back to this page. You want to make sure that you're using, you know, doghouse here, or the plural, in your navigation. You want to make sure that you're using it in your, you know, under your thumbnails, in your, in your, in your body text. I mean, link text is the most important off-page SEO element. And um, you can see kind of what the code looks like there. It's a little bit different if you're not running a Yahoo store, but you guys know what I'm talking about. But the most important thing nowadays is links, 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 links. You want to get more links with your keywords in it in the, in the anchor text from multiple domains. You know, the more unique domains you have linking back to your website, the better off you are. And just to show you the power of link text, I made an example right before this presentation where uh, if you go to Google right now and do a, do a search for... With, with quotes around it, the best shot collar money can buy, with quotes around it. The only place in the world that that phrase exists is on robsnell.com on my homepage. And I have a link pointing to one of our product pages that ranks. You see the number one product there, the Tritronic Sport Basic? The only reason that ranks is because of the link from my homepage on robsnell.com using that exact keyword phrase. The phrase the best shot collar money can buy does not appear anywhere on that Sport Basic page. And so that shows you the power of link text, why you want to use the keywords you want to rank for in your links. And you can see this uh, in the SERPs it shows up, but also in the, um, if you go to the cache, if you go to the Google search results and click on that cache link, it'll show you Google's copy of the page and you'll notice like up right above Steve's head it says these terms only appear in links pointing to this page, best shot collar money can buy. And that's a really competitive phrase, but that's a cool way to test to see if, you're, uh, if your links are actually working, if you're actually passing anchor text, which is important when you get links on other sites. Um, all right, we talked about um, uh, universal search and blended results. Um, I use Safari as my browser because of a feature that Safari lets me basically fool Google into thinking that I'm a brand new user. There's a, a button that says Reset Safari, and it deletes all your cookies, it deletes all your history. Um, it basically, you know, it's a virgin browser. And so what that does is that allows you to see what a new visitor would see. Uh, if you're logged into, you know, your Gmail or your Google AdWords account, Google's going to show you personalized results based on what you like. And I love it when a client, you know, is logged in and doing their searches because, wow, they're always number one because they're always going to their website. So Google says, okay, well, that retailer really likes his own website, so I'll make it higher up in the search engine results. But the reality is, is that you know, when you're logged in, you're not seeing what everybody else is seeing. So you want to use something like Safari, where you can reset Safari and see you know, a virgin browser. And then here's the search engine results page from a couple months ago. And I think we're number two now. We, we flip-flop with, uh, with these guys here. But when you do this, it works. It drives a lot of traffic and a lot of uh, revenue to your website. And so just to recap, SEO 101, I'm 13 minutes in. You know, I'm about to get into the good stuff. Um, Google's 80% of the battle. You got to be on page one. You need to be in the top five, preferably in the top three above the shopping results. And they keep changing how that works. You got to be in um, Google products. 
you know, with a data feed. Um, we use single feed for that. Um, the guy, uh, Don Cole and the guys over at, uh, at uh, Y Store Wizards are really good about that too. Uh, you want to get reviews so that you rank better for, for um, in the products. Title tag, body text. Uh, you want the keyword and the link. You want links from more unique domains, all right? So you know all this stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm probably repeating. Yes. Yeah, sorry. I just to interject real quickly. I think, you yeah, know, yeah. in general, what we had said uh, was most of the, the attendees have an idea about SEO, and that's why actually Rob went through this really quickly. But if you have any specific questions, please submit them, and we'll try to address them at the, the end of the webinar. Yeah, absolutely. And it's and a lot of this stuff I've got in much more depth. I've got a dummy's book. I make a dollar on it if you buy it on Amazon. I think there are like five copies left in the world. I think Tyler thought he bought the last one, but he just bought the last one Amazon had. So I appreciate <laughs> that. I make a dollar, you know. But I've got a lot of, you know, really detailed information on, this, you know, my process for doing this. But um, I'm going to actually get a little bit more philosophical here and talk about the different you know, ways I look at keywords and how I organize all these different elements you know, that I use on an online store. And once you kind of set all this stuff up, then when a panda comes along, you, know, you don't have to worry about getting chewed on. If you're doing everything that you're supposed to be doing, you know, you're going to be fine when they have these crazy updates. You know, one of the problems that I had when, uh, when Panda first came out was that I didn't have any of my sites that were personally affected by it. I mean, I had all these client sites I had access to. None of them got touched. You know, all of our sites, none of them got hit. I mean, it was really frustrating. And I actually picked up two new clients. You know, I came out of retirement to, um, to do some SEO, you know, for a couple of guys. And I got some more folks in the, in the hopper who want me to do some stuff, um, mainly just because they have really interesting problems. And the funny thing is, is they're not doing half the stuff I talk about. I've been talking about all this stuff for six years. Um, in that article on Panda, I outlined ten different things that I think you should do. There's only one new thing on there which is, you know, don't share your unique content that you write um, with, uh, with data feeds to your affiliates and shopping sites because then it's not unique. You're sharing your, your special little snowflake, you know, content with, um, with all these, you know, crappy sites. And there's some good shopping sites, but there are a lot of crappy shopping sites. All right, keywords. Everybody knows what keywords are. It's what people search for, you know, they type into the search box when they're searching. Um, some people collect stamps. Some people collect comic books. I collect converting keywords. And by converting keywords, I mean a keyword that somebody did a search for on a search engine, probably Google, and came to my website and bought something. I can tie revenue back to that keyword. And as retailers, we have an advantage over any other type of uh, online business because we can actually see the revenue that comes from visitors to our site. We can actually segregate our customers between you know, tire kickers and actual customers. Um, we run Yahoo Web Analytics, which is, used to be Index Tools. Um, on our Yahoo stores, and it's free for the uh, for the folks who are running the uh, better versions of Yahoo store. It's awesome. Um, there's also Google Analytics. I run that on Gundog Supply as well, and it's cool kind of seeing. You know, there's some features on one that are better. There's some features on the other. So depending on what I'm looking for, you know, I uh, I use a different tool. Monetus, my my good buddy Michael Whitaker over at Monetus has got a tool that allows people with third-party shopping carts like us to actually use Google Analytics, and he's got a, a ton of of killer things that he's doing. Um, this is, you know, a report in a second. It must be that Mississippi Internet mule must have stepped on the wire or something. Okay. Um, this is a, from a spreadsheet, a screenshot from a spreadsheet. These are, um, this is real data from real keywords. I just renamed them so you can't tell exactly what keywords they are. When I'm looking at keyword phrases, I look at number of visits, uh, the number of orders, the revenue. Uh, revenue per visitor is a very good quality metric. You can see in that um, the column that starts off with RPV and eleven dollars there. You know the, the orange. You know the color in, in these scales. You know if it's green, it's good. If it's if it's yellow, it's kind of not as good. If it's you know if it's orange or red, you know you need to pay attention. Um, you can see one of those doesn't have a high revenue per visitor, and I wonder why. I mean that that shows me right there. There's something to work on. The other thing I do by uh, keyword is I actually track conversion rate by keyword. Um, and then I'm actually um, pulling in some data. I've got uh, ranking data from Google uh, on the right-hand side. And so you can see where it's, you know, like on the second row where I've got a two and a three, I'm ranked number two, and, 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 and I have a nested result number three up underneath that. Whereas on the line above it, you know, I'm number one and number 11. And so right there's an opportunity. I need to stop this webinar and go optimize that phrase because with just a little bit of work, maybe one more link, maybe a little bit more content on that number 11, I can bump it to number 10. 
and then thanks to Google, it'll suck right up to number two. It'll immediately get jumped to number two. Um, the main thing I want you to walk away from this webinar with is I want you to prioritize everything you're doing on your sites by revenue. If you have time to do one thing, I want you working on the most valuable keyword. I want you working on the most valuable page because you know, you're not going to get to all 10,000 or 20,000 pages that you have. Start at the top, work your way down. Um, just as an example, you know, this is my top 25 keywords by traffic. And uh, the height on, on the graph, the height of the circle, is how much traffic I get. The size of the circle is how much money it generates in this time period. And you can see my first keywords, you know, big fat blue keyword. My second one, 27,000 visits. So it's a high traffic keyword, but it's also a high dollar keyword. But another high traffic keyword, my number three, almost as good as my number two, but it only generates $20,000 in revenue. My number two keyword is worth nine times as much as my number three when I'm looking at keywords by traffic. So that's why I don't freak out about losing high traffic keywords. I freak out about losing high revenue keywords. All right, and then conversion rate. I know, you know, you guys um, at Invest, where, you know, you look at conversion rate, but you also look at revenue. But when folks only obsess over conversion rate, hey, let's cut all our profits, I mean, all our uh, prices by 50% and double our conversion rate. Well, you know, I'm more interested in the total revenue, not just the number of orders. Because again, here you can see, you know, those top three bubbles right there, you know, high, high uh, number of orders, high revenue. But, um, you know, down here at the bottom, you know, oh, my number five keyword has got a lot of orders, but it's only $10,000 in revenue. So that's, you know, that's probably like a leather dog collar that's five bucks or something. I'm just, it's not, you know, one of our big electronic packages or something. So if I was just looking at my number of orders, I would be, you know, giving that keyword phrase too much uh, importance. So what I do is I look at my keywords by revenue. And, you know, there's a lot more blue on that screen right now. And, you know, you look at those, they're my same, you know, big three keywords, one, two, three, lots of orders, lots of revenue. Um, but these are a bunch of medium-sized keywords here. These are, you know, 22 more, 20 to $30,000 keywords. And this is a pretty small sample time-wise. I mean, that's a lot of money. So when I'm obsessing over my keywords, I'm, you know, doing, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about revenue. And the reason I collect converting keywords is because, you know, in this sample, I've got $5 million in sales from 21,000 converting keywords, $5 million. And I, don't know, I know for a lot of you guys, you know, a million dollars isn't that much money, but, you know, we're a small retailer. Um, you know, our projects this year combined will probably do 13, 14 million. I mean, there's some folks on here who, you know, whose annual sales are probably more than my lifetime sales. Um, but, you know, $5 million is, is a lot of money to be, to be chasing with SEO. And the way I organize that, you know, in my brain is like, okay, well, that's $5 million. That's five $1 million buckets, right? And so if I've got, you know, if, I can, if I've got five hours, I need to be spending my time, you know, where the money is. So I allocate, you know, those keywords by bucket. And one of the things that I noticed is when I took all these keywords in my Excel spreadsheet and graphed them out, I was like, okay, well, you know, the first two or three of those big, you know, revenue keywords, and then it drops off, you know, and then you know, kind of see this tail coming out the back end of this graph, and everybody talks about the long tail. It's like, well, that kind of reminds me of something, a dinosaur. So I like to have a metaphor. So let's use the dinosaur as my, you know, my keyword metaphor. So in my first bucket, my first million dollar bucket, I've got 20 keywords that have generated that first million dollars. And these are the keywords, you know about them, you obsess over them. Um, they generate, in this sample, generate 6,500 orders from 20 keywords. And let me, let me say, I didn't say this before, out of that $5 million, I took out all my name terms, my domain name, gundogsupply.com, uh, Gundog Supply, you know, any, any uh, keyword phrases that contain my brand or my, my uh, company name or my domain, I took those out because I'm going to rank for those automatically. I don't need to be giving myself credit for that when I'm chasing these more generic uh, keywords. All right, so this first bucket, head terms, 20 keywords. I mean, I obsess over these keyword phrases. Um, most people only concentrate on these. They only freak out about these, about these head terms, but that's only the first million out of the five million. Um, you have, you have uh, four more buckets you've got to be worried about. So don't be just freaking out about those first 20 keywords. Um, you know, for us, the next million-dollar bucket uh, had 180 keywords. So 180 different keywords generated um, 10,000 orders, and those would be like, you know, the neck terms, I like to call them. And some of those are like variations on the head terms, you know, but um, it, it's much easier to rank for the for this second bucket. And we're only in our second million here, so let's go, go to our third million. 
the third million dollars from that sample came from 800 different keywords. And I mean, now these are competitive, but it's like it's not so competitive that I mean, you can easily be, you know, in the top five in your niche for for these types of keyword phrases. You know, these are not home page keywords; these are section and product pages ranking for these keyword phrases. 9,000 orders from 800 keywords, and that's, you know, we're only $3 million in right now. And I call those the back keywords. All right, and then the next million, 2,500 different keywords generated 8,000 orders. I mean, that's still a million dollars, and you're probably not even looking at these keywords. You're probably not even tracking these keywords. And I call that, that fourth bucket the rump. And there's a lot of meat in the rump, a lot of money in there. And then finally, the last million dollars in sales from that sample came from 16,500 different long tail keywords. And it's funny, those 16,500 keywords also generated 16,500 orders. So that's one unique keyword per order. And I don't track these individually. I actually build my templates and write my content with this in mind to rank for these keyword phrases and just almost by accident we started ranking for these and then we have kind of learned how to optimize you know for these long tail keywords and I'm about 25 minutes in so, so your homework is what are your top ranking keywords by revenue your top revenue keywords and you know do you know what your head terms are do you know what your long tail terms are you need to collect converting keywords all right so once you have all these keywords you know you got to organize them, right and so I don't organize my keywords by revenue. I actually organize my keywords by uh, several different ways. I make these buckets that, um, that, that, uh, where the keywords actually go together. So I'll take all my keywords, all my converting keywords, and I'll dump them in a, in a tool called Wordle, W-O-R-D-L-E.net, Wordle.net. And you have to, I, um, it's got a weird uh, Java applet, so if you can't run Java, you, know, you can't use it. But it's a tool where you dump in just you know, thousands of keywords, and it generates this uh, keyword cloud for you. And it shows, you know, the, the size of the word is how many times uh, it appears in the uh, in that list. And so you can see hunting, dummy, gun, Tritronics, Inatech. You know, we've got some brand manufacturer brands in there. We have uh, you know, different types of dogs. We have different types of products. Um, some brand names. I mean, you know, you can see all my buckets here, or I can, by looking at this and going, okay, well, they're you know, they're probably you know, thirty or forty or fifty buckets in here that we would actually organize around products and, uh, and, and, uh, and sections on our website. And when I'm organizing these terms, I tend to organize them in two ways, um, by brands, like manufacturer brand, like you saw a minute ago, and by the generic terms. And so, you know, something like, you know, Osborne can Canine Canteen would be a brand term, but if it was like Osborne Bucket, that would be both a, um, a brand term and a generic term. And so, like, let's take dog boots. Um, you saw, probably saw the word boots in that keyword cloud. I go through and I filter my uh, converting keyword list. And I say, show me all the uh, the converting keywords that contain the word boots. And boom, I get this huge list. And sometimes you'll have some false positives. You've got to chuck some stuff out of there. But you go through this thing, and you um, you go through this list, and it's amazing. And so I took the word dog out, and I took the word boots out. Otherwise, those would be you know totally taken over the screen. So I dump those words in a tag cloud just for me so I can see what are the most important words, you know, what are customers looking for, how do I need to you know organize my content, you know, based on the uh, the keywords that are generating revenue, and in here you can see Lewis. That's a brand. Um, you know, rubber uh, dog boot. That's a, that's a type. Um, then you see all these other little bitty words like these modifiers, like coupon and review and reviews, and th that's really important. You can see um, words that people are using to solve problems, like protectors and uh, protection. Protectors spelled wrong. Um, you can see parts of the dog's foot, like foot and pad. Uh, you can see uh, geo terms like. Uh, uh, like snow, actually, it's more like where folks are using the um, using the product, and these are bubbling up in my converting keyword phrases. And so I'm going to give you something right now that um, if you're doing, you know, at least a million dollars a year, this is going to generate some significant revenue for you. You need to add these buying modifiers to the text on your pages. And I'm not going to go into too much detail on how I do it, but you can kind of figure out, you know, by looking at some of the stuff we've done or reading my book. I've got a, a chapter on it um, where I cover that in the keywords. We generated over $360,000 in the last year with uh, keyword phrases using these modifiers. Well, modifiers like buy, cheap, best, review. We have over 200 modifiers, both you know, global that apply to any single product, and then specific that apply you know to a certain type of product. Um, but these are action you know buying words 
they actually, you know, they're, they're like a commercial word. And if you don't have these words on your page, you're not going to rank for those terms. If you don't have these words in links pointing to your pages, you're not going to rank for those terms. And I'll just, just a couple of quick examples. Um, discount hunting dog vest. You know, we rank for hunting dog vest, but what about discount hunting dog vest? Well, we're uh, number one and two for that last time I looked. Buy hunting dog vest, number one and number two. Um, next page, hunting vest online. Um, the word online is the modifier there. We are... Uh, we're number three and four in, the, in this example. Uh, one of my competitors has the word online in his name. There's no way that I'm going to outrank that guy for online. Um, you know, so your homework is collect different buy modifiers by going through your converting keywords and pull these out and then add them to your pages. And um, a shout out to my good buddy Craig for, uh, for his idea on the paddock footer. All right, now what you going to do? So you got all these keywords and you know what to do. Let's talk about pages. I'm at about two-thirds of the way into my webinar, so I have a feeling I'm going to run out of time if we want to do the Q&A. Um, this is one of the most important concepts that I've had, um, that I've recognized recently. Um, prioritize your SEO pages based on revenue. A lot of folks uh, got hit by the May Day update last May when Google you know, made a change to the algorithm to where if there was a manufacturer's name, a brand term that's not your brand, but somebody else's brand, um, I saw a lot of automotive guys get whacked by this. Um, the uh, the Mayday update took those away from people who didn't own that brand. So, like in our example, like the Tritronics, if we had to, you know, buy cheap Tritronics, uh, you know, UK trans, uh, UK charger, um, you know, we'd rank for that. But now Tritronics ranks for that, even though they don't necessarily have all those modifiers on the page. So, you know, Google, you know, it's, it's their brand term; it belongs to them. They should rank higher than we do, um, but. When the Mayday change happened, we lost some terms. We gained some other terms, and we actually came out okay. But um, we actually started changing the way we looked at measuring our uh, SEO, our, you know, the value that we got from SEO. So we actually started looking at the number of pages that were driving revenue for us, and that told us where to spend our time. All right, so pages. We, um, I have 20,000 pages roughly on Gundog Supply. I did, a, I did an item count. I did a, a section count. I mean, I basically know exactly how many HTML files I've got on my website. Well, I want to know how many are actually in the Google index, how many actually have a chance to rank, all right? So if you go to Google and type in site colon yourdomain.com, whatever that is, um, the last time I looked, I had 17,700 pages that were actually, that Google was telling me are in the index. All right, so that's a good number. So that's not 20,000, but that's, that's in the number. You know, that's uh, really close. But then I'm actually more interested in how many of those pages are actually driving traffic to my site. So I look at my analytics, and I see that 6,600 of those are actually entry pages from Google in the past year. So I've got, you know, what, 15,000, no, no, 13,000 pages on my website that are not even, you know, uh, they may be in the index, but they're not sending me any traffic. But like we said a little while ago, who cares about traffic? I care about revenue. So how many pages you know, are sending me uh, customers from Google? Well, I have 2,000 pages, or 10% of my pages are actually driving traffic that comes to my site, and they bookmark us and come back, or they actually place an order. You know, 2,000 different entry pages in the past year. And so those, you know, even though it's the top 10% of, uh, it's only 10% of my pages, those are the pages that I'm actually going to be concerned with. But I also like to prioritize things by revenue. And when I sorted these in descending order by revenue, I noticed 100 pages drove 75% of my organic revenue in the last year. And that's amazing because now I know exactly where to spend my time. If I spend, you know, 75% of my time on those 75, uh, almost 100 pages, I'm going to get a bigger bank from my buck than if I just start at the A's and work my way through 20,000 pages. So it helps you prioritize for all kinds of things. And so your homework is, you know, what are your top 100 Google uh, entry pages? Not from PPC clicks, but from organic clicks. And in Yahoo Web Analytics, it's really easy to figure that out. Uh, in Google, they're, they're, they've just got a button you press. Um, but it's, it's harder to see the, the dollar amount. But what are your top 100 pages? You need to make a list and have this so you can go back to it and, and compare this list to itself over time and watch these 100 pages. You know, if you had 15,000 pages that got nuked in Google, who cares if it's not your top 100? All right, here's another concept, and I'm going to hit this real quick. Every single keyword on your, on your site has the most relevant page for it. And it's usually the page that ranks for that keyword phrase. But you want to take 
uh, you want to make sure that you're linking to this most relevant page with that keyword phrase in the link. And you want to, you know, you want to concentrate your efforts. You don't want to link, use the same keyword term like hunting dog supplies and link to 10 or 15 different pages because Google's going to get confused over which page is actually about hunting dog supplies. Um, a good way to find out what your most relevant page is is just to do a search for your keyword phrase on Google and see where you rank. But if you're not in the top 10, you can do a site colon domain dot com so it only shows you results from from your website, and then just add the keyword phrase to it. So here's an example. You know, I did uh, site colon gundogsupply dot com, and then I added the word odor meat, and it shows me all the pages you know on my site um, that are about odor meat in descending order of relevancy. So that tells me that that first page right there, the um, the uh, first page in the results should be the page that I can you know link to with the keyword phrase odor mute. Um, but I'm you know I hate to say the word greedy. You know I, I want to find two relevant pages for every keyword. Y'all remember that clustered result a little while ago? Google when you have two pages that make it to the front page like number one and number ten, Google you know will automatically boost that second page to, to cluster right up underneath that first page. So if you're number one and number 10, you're really going to be number one and number two. So I optimize two pages for every single keyword phrase for my top 1,000 converting keyword phrases. And this isn't going to double your traffic. I mean, I used to think it would, and now we've got a little bit better data. I mean, you get a 20 or 30 percent increase in your traffic. And, you know, your homework for, uh, you know, for this segment is to go find the two most relevant pages for your top 100 revenue keywords. And that tells you, so you'll have 200 URLs and you'll have 200 keywords that match up with those and you can make links and say, okay, well these are the keywords that I want to get in links pointing to these pages. All right, site structure. I'm 12.35. I'm doing okay time-wise actually. Um, you want to have one URL per page of content. You don't want to have multiple um, ways for search engine spiders or for people to link to your website and so there, there are several ways to do that. The first thing is you just want to put, you know, if you've got a nugget of content, just put it on one page. Don't put it on, you know, 10 pages on your website. Um, you can use 301s, which are redirects, and your propeller head, you know, geeky guys who do stuff that makes my head hurt can explain this better than I can. Um, there's a thing called a canonical URL where you can say this is the one URL to this page, and that's the tag. Matt Cut has got a bunch of stuff on it. But if you do that, that prevents other versions of that page from, uh, from getting indexed. Um, all right, this is a moneymaker. This is awesome, and I should not be talking about this because I have a competitor who I can see who's on the uh, who's on this webinar. So this really doesn't work as good uh, as I say, dude. Um, all right, from your home page, you want to link to your best 40 or even to 100 pages using your best keywords. And I see people blowing this all the time. You know, they link to 400 different pages from their home page. Only link on your home page to the pages in that Google Top 100. And only use the keywords in the link that you want to rank. Don't use click here. You know, use the keyword actually in the phrase. And so your homework is to optimize your home page. I want you to go look at your home page right now. I want you to view source, throw it over in a text editor, and, uh, you know, and pull out all the, uh, the Ahrefs and see how many times you link to how many different pages. And uh, you're going to find all kinds of stuff. You're going to find all these links that, to pages that don't matter. You're going to find uh, bad anchor text. You're going to find redundant links. Um, and this kind of brings me to some more philosophical stuff, the site pyramid. Any page that you link to from your home page is on the second level of your website. All right, when Google looks at your website from an SEO perspective, if you link to it from the home page, it's considered a second level page almost as good as the home page. So if you link to a crappy product, Google says that's you know, the second most important page you know, after the home page. So be really careful what you link to from the home page. But there's some cool things you can do um, do with this. If you have, say, your top 100 best sellers and you don't want to put them all on your homepage, here's an easy way to get a lot of link popularity to your best sellers. Make a best sellers page and drop your top 100 in there. And then link to that page from your homepage and then also to wham, you know, every time Googlebot comes to your site, it's going to follow that best sellers link. And so, you know, it's, it's you know, two hops away from the homepage. Your best sellers are normally product pages that are usually five or six levels deep in a bigger website. So this is a very easy way to get the spiders, and not just for search engines, for customers too. You know, when customers they want to see what the bestseller is, that social proof of other people buying stuff is great for uh, increasing conversion rates. 
revenue-based navigation. My dad used to give me a hard time about how I did navigation on the website. And if I had a category that wasn't producing any revenue, I'd rip that sucker off the website. One of my new clients has got 100 different links on, a, on his top navigation and on his sidebar navigation. And I guarantee you that those are not his top 100 revenue categories. And so what we're going to do is we're going we're to take a sales report, we're going to prioritize his categories and subcategories by how much revenue they generate. And if something's good enough to be in the navigation, it better be generating some money. All right, de-templify your store. I see more Yahoo stores and more e-commerce sites when I do site reviews at all these search shows we speak at who have the exact same template on every single page on 50,000 pages in their website. And that is that's stupid. I mean, it's like there's no reason to do that. It, it's not smart from a, from a customer perspective because if I'm in the reptile supplies, do I really, you know, uh, need a link to the cat stuff. I'm a reptile person. I'm in my I'm in my little you know, what is that monitor lizard or whatever one of these kids has got. Um, you want to have a department for each major category, and it helps from a search engine perspective as well. And so what I like to do, um, let's talk about the link aspect of it real quick first. The um, if you have 50,000 pages on your website and the first link on, on, in your boilerplate is hunting dog supplies. You know, Google's going to hit that page, and it goes to another page, and it goes to another page. And after about 200 pages, Google says to me, it's like, okay, Rob, I got it. This page that you're linking to is about hunting dog supplies, no sweat. And then it disregards the other 49,800 pages that are linking to hunting dog supplies. Because, you know, Google's like, you know, it, Google understands what you're trying to do here. Back in 2001, all you had to do was get 50,000 links with your keyword in your navigation, and wham, you'd rank, or do a footer link. Well, that doesn't work anymore, so diminishing returns set in, in my opinion, after about 200 pages. And on Gundog Supply, you know, I've got my home page. I've got my category pages that have a different navigation based upon where you are in the site, which you can't see that yet because my Internet's a little bit slow. And as soon as that pops up, I will click. And the home page, I mean, the uh, product pages don't even have top-level navigation. Once you get in the on a product page for me, um, I want you to be, um, I want you to give me some money. I want to solve your problem, you know. But I want you to be thinking about, you know, you getting that dog collar and solving your problem. Our, our product reviews pages have a different template. I've got probably six different templates I use on Gun Dog Supply, and it's got 20,000 pages. I mean, if you've got 100,000 pages, you need multiple templates. All right, here's another good one. Um, Cross-link your product pages. I saw some sites um, after the last time I spoke at something, somebody emailed me and said, hey, how come I don't rank for this magic card trick? It's like, well, the dude only had one link to that product page, and it was from his category page. And this is a really easy thing to do. If you've got, um, you know, say, say you've got 25 different products in a category, um, on each product page, the product. So you, you can basically link across and have like a fashion show and kind of like you know page 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 through the product so you don't have to pogo stick back up you know back and uh, back and forth between your category and your subcategory. All right, links is the the final piece of the puzzle, and I've talked about some of this stuff already, so I'll probably blast through some of this this stuff. If you have a website that has um, ten thousand pages on it and you have a hundred links on every page, you control a million links. And this isn't a link building seminar. Um, we're not talking about you know external links, and I should because that's that's almost worth as much as internal. But you don't have control over other people's websites linking to you. You have control over your own website. You have a million links. If you have a decent sized store, play with those links. You can do some amazing stuff. One of the worst things that I see, you know, um, I'm not picking on anybody, you know, in particular, Candy Lady, but are redundant links. People link into the same page multiple times on the same page. So you're, you're on a section page, and you link back to your home page four different ways. You know, your logo links to your home page. You have a link that says home, and your breadcrumbs that links to your home page. You have a link in your footer that says home page, and somewhere else you got, you know, that you're linking to it. Only one of those text links is going to count. Only one of those anchors is going to count. So eliminate redundant linking. Have one link on a page. All right, the next thing is bad link text, like using the word home in the link instead of whatever you want that home page to rank for. So if you're linking to your home page with the word home, you're going to rank poorly because a million other sites do it, but you're going to rank for the keyword phrase home. I like to use you know, um, a more generic term for what you sell. And if I was doing it on Gundog, which I'm not in my breadcrumbs for other reasons, I would use something like hunting dog supplies, 
as my the first link in my breadcrumbs, but I hate breadcrumbs. Um, like we said before, I want you to use run of site anchor text wisely. We talked about you know 200 links. So like here's an example of uh, of my links on Gundog. This is older, but you can see you know boom boom boom. That's three different levels on my website. You can see how the anchor text is different. And I'm not an information architecture expert, so I do some crappy stuff for SEO sometimes, but I'm cleaning it up. I'm cleaning it up. All right, one of the most valuable things you can do is embed links in your body text. It's the caption field for you Yahoo store folks. And by that I mean these are links that are in the meat of your content. They're not in your footer. They're not in your run of site navigation. Um, Google likes these a lot better because they, you know, that's an editorial endorsement of that page, as my good buddy Matt Cuts would say. Um, so in the body text, on the pages, and I've got a couple of examples here like on, on Steve's site, um, where you know, if I want the page to rank for Tritronic Sport Basic, I link to it with the words Tritronic Sport Basic. If I refer to a, a product or a section within some body text, I want to link to it. Okay. And this is a killer trick for some of the advanced folks out here that is going to make you know sitting through the SEO 101 worthwhile. I'm about to give away the store on this one. When uh, Bing took over Yahoo, I was crying because Yahoo had these killer advanced operators that you could do to do um, some filtering. You can't do this on Google. You can't do this on Bing. Um, well, fortunately, you know, our, uh, across the pond there, our buddies at uk.yahoo.com are still using the old uh, version of Yahoo because this still works on uk.yahoo.com. And this is similar um, to, to what we were doing as far as finding the most relevant page. The first thing we're doing is we're finding pages on our site. So the first part of our, part of our query is site colon yourdomain.com. Only show me pages from my store. All right? And then the next thing I'm doing is I want to find pages on my store that have this keyword phrase. So I can, my case, it might be duck hunting. So I say site colon gundogsupply.com space duck hunting. That would show me all the pages on Gundog that have, you know, the words duck hunting on it. Well, then here's the cool part that, um, that the other search engines can't do. I can actually say show me all the pages on Gundog that have the word duck hunting on it and link to a specific page. So I can say, show me all the pages, you know, that have that have a link linking to the my duck hunting supplies page, and all that does is that tells me what links I already have. That, del that doesn't tell me what links I don't have. And this is the cool part. And there are two people out there right now that will make some money from this. This is this is for you guys. If you stick a minus in front of link, this will show you all the pages on Gundog Supply that have the word duck hunting that don't link to your duck hunting page. You put minus link colon and then the actual, you have to put the full URL there but it wouldn't fit on my slide. This will tell you where there's content on your website that's using keywords that you want to rank for but it's not linking to the page that you want to rank. This is the easiest on-site SEO that you can do. And, uh, and a hobby dude needs to do this too. Um, and I'm a one minute over but I'm going to keep going through some of this if that's okay. Um, Non-unique content kills e-commerce sites. Panda is, you know, if you have a data feed, if you're getting, you know, copying and pasting from the manufacturer's website, uh, and all your content's that way, Google says, well, you know, you're a low-value site, boom, you're dead. 60% of your traffic is gone. And you need to write unique product descriptions. And for Yahoo stores, that's captions, names and caption fields. Don't just cut and paste. Here's an example of a manufacturer's product description from, from uh, one of uh, the products that we sell, the Garmin Astro. And my slide's a little slow. Um, all right, so th I just copied and pasted this off their website. I just grabbed the first sentence um, out of their description. And sometimes it's better to grab the, the, the first sentence of the second paragraph because scraper sites are going to grab this from the Google SERPs. But just grab a sentence from the manufacturer's product description. You got up to 32 words in a Google query. Okay, Put quotes around it so you're only seeing exactly that phrase and then do a search. And what comes up uh, the last time I looked is that shopping.yahoo.com, shopwiki, chow.com, best pet store online. You can see all the lazy retailers and all the shopping sites that are using the data feed or just copying and pasting the manufacturer's description. And right now, actually, uh, thanks to Panda, a lot of these sites got nuked. And we actually have that on our site, too. So I'm kind of embarrassed that we're number one or number two for that phrase. But when you have original product descriptions, you tend to rank really well. And I don't know if we still do, but uh, Garmin Astro is one of our better keyword phrases, and we rank right after the manufacturer. I think we're doing pretty well with that still. All right, so how do you make all of this content? 
All right. There's my baby brother. It's hard work. I mean, it takes a lot of work. Um, well, that's all we do when he comes over to my office is we talk about content. We write content. Um, I like to tell folks, write one new paragraph for every $10 in item price. You know, So if you get a $99 item, you know, write me 10 three-sentence paragraphs about it. And, you know, and then but do it in order. Work on your products in descending order by revenue. Take your best sellers, do them first, and then work your way down the list. The other thing about unique content, um, which I don't have a slide about, is, is that you want to be working on those top 100 Google entry pages. The content on those pages has got to be fresh. You know, and then on your visitor pages, you want those, you know, even the ones that aren't providing revenue, those might be like uh, shoppers that are in the, the early stages of looking. They're not ready to buy yet. You want unique content on those. So the secret is the right top shelf content. I mean like the best content. I'm not talking about just like, you know, you know, paying some some guy in, in Alabama just hammer something out. I'm talking actually, you know, sit down and write out stuff. And and one of the ways we did it with Steve is we replicate what he does on the phone with a customer. We have these buyers guides. And um this is the new generation buyers guide that I haven't launched yet. Steve this is gonna kill me because it's not launched yet. Um the uh we have a fifty percent higher conversion rate for new customers coming to our website who enter Gun Dog Supply on a buyer's guide. And I know it's working because all our competitors are copying us now. And we're rolling out buyer's guides. I've got over here on my uh, whiteboard, I've got a list of 50 different buyer's guides that we're about to roll out. It makes a huge difference. You want to walk folks through what you know they need to know. I'm shopping on your store. I don't know what I need to know to buy what you sell. All right, you want home page intro text. I like to have you know 300 to 500 words on my home page that support whatever I want my home page to rank for, blah, blah, blah. I'm five minutes late. Uh, three sentences on category pages, not just a list of thumbnails. Um, there's like a list of thumbnails when that shows up. All right, I hand tweak these top 100 pages. I hand write titles. I hand write meta descriptions in my Yahoo store templates. You can kind of see a before and after. Uh, of a of the snippets that appear in the Google search results, but I automate um, you know those twenty thousand. I have an automatic title tag generator. It takes the name, it adds some other information, it adds some keywords. You know, it automatically creates this you know computer optimized name for me. Well, my top one hundred title tags, I'm actually going to handcraft those. My top one hundred meta descriptions, I'm actually going to write those. And you can see in this example before and after, um, and I'll have these slides where y'all can get them. Uh, I'm going to run a little bit late, but I'm going to keep going if that's all right. This is a uh, a utility template that I've got on my Yahoo store that I've got for every single page, and it shows me the ID. It shows me the canonical URL if I've got one. It shows me the product name, the thing I call the short name, the alt name, the page title, all the different ways that I you know do stuff with my content so I don't have to look at my boilerplate, my template, um, you know, when I'm looking at this stuff. Um, I talked about that already. And then the last thing is you want to optimize for long tail phrases on pages that are indexed in Google. All right. And what do I mean by that? Um, go to your analytics. My slides are behind. It's going to jump through this in a second. But go to your analytics and take one bucket. And this one I just grabbed Toughfoot, you know, which is the thing that makes dogs' feet tougher. And I said, grab me all the converting keywords, you know, in a week for Toughfoot. And you know, you can see in this one that. Um, the the seventy five percent of my sales came from my top three terms, and you know me, I'm chasing the revenue, chasing the revenue, concentrate on those. But the reality is, twenty five percent of my sales came from all these other terms. Okay, so it's really easy to to uh, to automate this and to to loop back and grab these keyword phrases and get a thirty three percent increase in the number of terms that you're chasing. So I take these uh, all those keyword phrases and I boil them down to the unique words. All right, and then you know you can do a tag cloud too, but then I write up content based around those different um, keyword phrases and I add it to the caption or my body text on my Toughfoot page and, uh, and my product page ranks for it. I stick it in my body text. And that's a really easy way to, um, to add these bottom, uh, the, you know, these modifiers that are product specific or section specific to product pages. And this does a lot of work. You know, you're a retailer, you don't have a lot of time. Um, you want to be spending your time on your top 100 pages. You want to be spending your time writing buyers guides. Get your interns, get your production folks to actually learn how to go and get these secondary keywords and write baby content. Um, if you're not on my email list, um, info at ystore.com will get you on there. I just hit that list when I've got a um, presentation that's up or if I'm speaking at something, I'll be at AdTech next week. Um, 
What else have I got? I've got robsnell.com. I've got tons of free info. I've got that Panda article. I've been writing a monthly column for uh, Search Engine Land. And, I mean, they're, you know, my girlfriend doesn't call them columns. She calls them lesson plans because they're just, you know, way more detailed than they should be for just like a little bitty article. But a lot of free stuff. I love talking about this kind of stuff. Drop me an email. I've got my email on the website. And I'd love to hear your questions. How are we doing time-wise? Excellent. I, we have like seven minutes, so we don't have a lot of time for questions, but thank you so much um, for, for all that information. I think you know, people probably could have stayed much longer hearing what we had to say because I think it's uh, very useful. Um, sure. Two questions. I think we're going to get to you know, maybe a couple. Um, one question is, how do you get your product data feed into Google Shopping? Um, man, that's a whole other bailiwick. There. there are experts. If you go to singlefeed.com, and uh, my buddy Ryan over there will take care of you. Drop my name, and he'll give 100 bucks to the uh, Red Cross for, uh, for Haiti relief. Um, you need somebody who does that. Google feed optimization is, is a it, – it's so competitive, you need somebody who can actually you know, take your feed, make it conform to Google standards, and, uh, um, and, and optimize it for you. And if you're a Yahoo store, also Don Cole over at uh, you know, your store, Wizards, is awesome. And pretty much any store developer uh, can, can help you. The fast pivot guys. Uh, turn me on to um, to single feed and the fast pivot. They can do that for you too. Okay. okay. Excellent. Um, you know, we will have a recording of this on the site. So if, if you miss anything or if you need any other information, you can definitely get it because I think people had questions about that as well. Um, one okay. question is, what what is the best RTML company to convert my Yahoo store from a template? Yeah, email me. I'll give you a list of folks that I personally endorse. From I know them personally. I know how they do stuff. Um, robsnail at gmail.com is my personal email address, which I just gave out over the air. But um, robsnail at gmail.com. I, I don't want to publicly, you know, endorse or not endorse people. Okay. Uh, another question is more of a one-on-one -on -one question, which is uh, where do you find the keywords by revenue, Google Analytics or Yahoo Web Analytics? Yeah, I use Yahoo Web Analytics because it's so much easier to get to the money. You know, uh, I think Google Analytics has got a sexier interface, but it's like they won't let you export. You know, I can export 100,000 keyword phrases. I can get a 20,000 converting keyword list in a minute um, over at uh, Yahoo Web Analytics. So there's a report you go into. Um, oh man, I'm not looking at my screen, but it's a real easy report to get to in your uh, uh, under uh, conversions, under SEO, SEM, um, uh, search phrases. And it'll do um, because it's in the marketing tab. It'll do you know search phrases by revenue. And then I, I still, it, to be funny, it's like you know I give Khaled a hard time about you know how much content I've stolen from him because a lot of the uh, optimization stuff we do uh, in the past year has been from ideas that he's planted in my brain that has now taken root. You know, I mean, he's a, you guys are awesome. You know, the idea like I, I wrote a whole column on um, on Search Engine Land about we got a 300% sales increase on one product page by doing one thing that he kind of inspired, which was you actually optimize your category pages. Um, when you're doing conversion rate optimization, you don't spend all your time on, uh, you know, in the bottom of the funnel in the cart. And, you know, I thought I was, when I was optimizing that page, I thought I was going to actually be driving more search engine traffic. So it was an SEO project that turned into a conversion rate optimization project because it wasn't new folks coming to that page. It was more folks from the category page, not bouncing, not exiting, not looking at something else, going straight to, hey, that's exactly what I'm looking for. And so um, that was a really, really cool thing that, that I appreciate. I just want to make sure y'all got credit for that because I'd like to give oh, credit Thank you. I definitely appreciate that. Um, and, you know, we'd love to hear that kind of information, that kind of feedback because, you know, that, that, those types of, that type of information that we have out there is exactly what we'd like you to do, try to implement it and, and see those results. Well, it, it does and this I mean I've always believed in your job as a as a, a webmaster you know even as a retailer is to move folks to the next page in, in the, the next step in the funnel you know if somebody comes to your home page you want to get them to a category page somebody gets to a category page you want to move them to a product page so they have a chance to buy if somebody makes it to a product page you want them to add to cart if somebody adds to cart you want to move them to the checkout if somebody makes it to checkout you want them to buy and that's you know your job is just to kind of push people to the next step in the funnel and I see a lot of folks with a uh, search engine traffic with horrendous bounce rates. And, you know, load speed is the big deal. I've got one of my new guys, and he's got a 1.7 megabyte entry page that's got, you know, a 60% bounce rate. I mean, the reason why is because the page won't load, you know? And yeah. I'm sure I'll talk to him after this phone call about it, but it's like, you know, that I think is his biggest search engine optimization problem uh, for the traffic that he's already got. And that sends a horrible signal to, um, 
you know, to Google, using, anybody using the toolbar, if he's running Google Analytics, Google knows what your bounce rate is, you know. So decrease the number of thumbnails, you know, make a page, especially for your top 100 Google entry pages for, for SEO reasons, make those fast loading pages, make them under 100K. I know that sounds really light, but um, not every, you, you know, y'all have seen today from, from the internet, I'm actually on a, on, a, on a 10 megabit connection and, you know, my slides are 12 megabytes, it's not that big a file. Um, and you see how slow it is. If you have a fast loading site, people are going to notice. Absolutely. Um, Any more when, questions? Are we? Well, there, there are there are actually a number of questions, and I'll send you these questions definitely. But um, one last thing is the keyword cloud site is is Wordle. W O R D L E dot com. Is that dot correct? Net. Yeah. Dot, dot net. Wordle. Dot net. You just Google it, and you got to have Java installed. Like in my case, I couldn't do it with Chrome on my Mac. I had to use Safari, but uh, so it's a little flaky, but there's some other tools that'll do that as well. But that's an awesome way to, and I stole that from Avinash. You know, um, I use it for a lot of other things, but uh, Avinash, the the um, analytics guru, is a buddy of mine, and uh, and you know that's a, an awesome way to take your best converting keywords and dump them in there. And like these big, huge, you know, corporate sites, you know, nine times out of ten, their brand terms, you know, like Best Buy, they're, most of their words are going to be Best Buy. For us little guys, it's not going to be our brand name because we're not nationally known brands. You know, it's going to be more generic terms, and then the manufacturers that we sell, and so that gives you a really good idea of what individual buckets to to optimize for. And then you take one of the things that pops up in there, like you know the word boots, and go find all your keywords on your site that generated traffic and sales, you know, to your boots. And one of the things like that I that I got from you guys at Invest was, was to actually not just look at converting keywords, look at carding keywords as well. Show me the folks who actually, um, you know, that's like a second group of keywords. Instead of 20,000, it'd be more like 25,000. And that shows you folks that are, you know, earlier in the purchase cycle that aren't ready to buy necessarily, but they might want to add it to the cart to see what your shipping rate is. So I hope that went off on a tangent there. No, no, not at all. Thank you so much, Rob. We really appreciate it. I think, um, you know, that's all the time that we have for today. I think there are a number of questions, and like I said, I will send you uh, that information um, so that you you can have that. But we will have this presentation, this webinar on our site. You can access it there. And please don't forget that next month we will have another webinar on conversion optimization um, for e-commerce sites. I think combining SEO with conversion, you can really see you know a major difference in your your revenue. Um, so thanks a lot, Rob. We really appreciate it. And and uh, you know, for any more information, you can definitely email us. I know that this uh, webinar was actually there was lots of people that tried to get in, but it did reach um, maximum capacity. So next uh, month, uh -oh. make sure you get in early. Um, so, uh, but but thanks a lot for for all the time, and uh, you know, we we hope to see you next month. Awesome. Great. All right, thanks, peeps. We are out of here. Thanks, Invest. No problem. I'll, uh, Thank you, Rob. I'll, I'll hook up with you guys in a bit. Thanks. Okay. Bye.